Hello. Packing pals. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> that was very energetic for you. I'm not sure about I, that one. It's a Tuesday and Dan's All had right. a sugar. Watch <laughs> out, world. Dan is ready to party. John's seen me right at the start. Hey, everybody. Went- it's a fresh, sensual, perhaps seductive, and definitely shivery Tuesday. And it's coming fine. at you round the world, live, through your canals, it's Stop. Dan and Phil, the Packing Pals. No one wants them to come through our, their canals, or whatever you just said. Packing Pals, thank you to Blanche, Anya, and <laughs> Rowan for Ooh, suggesting well, that name. Well, that, this name comes from three people, is it? They all came together and had a brainstorming session. They're like, we have to share yeah. the credit. <laughs> I well, thought it was what just I did... Blanche, and then the other two were like, you have to tag us onto your name because it's so good, we'll get a shout-out. Or maybe, actually... like, which one of you? It was three separate ones, but I went back in time and just chose oh. three people that said it around the same time. And well, you got there first. If anyone invented it afterwards, then so you're too late. They were three separate people. Yeah, I thought I'd give a shout-out to three people with the collective well, brain cell. Well, one of them stole the other one's homework. Hello, we need some Nancy Drew up in here. Who was the first person to say packing power? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go on Twitter right now. I, th- I think it was Blanche. Goddamn mystery. So, Phil, you have a gay headband on your um, head, head in the icon. <laughs> <Have> you- <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> yeah, I'm feeling fine. very... Happy, merry, and gay today. And I thought I'd show it off with a headband because I don't wear headbands in real life. So why not wear mm, them on stereo, mm. you know? I'm having some character progression and my cap that I was wearing last week has been rotated round like I'm Ash Ketchum and I mean business. Yeah, I like that. So You're about to that's, throw that ball. Exactly. It's character progression, actually, is what it is. Let's have a hello. Hi. Hello. Hey, besties. <laughs> how are you? I'm good, thanks. I just finished searching, and it was Blanche. So thank you to Blanche only, and anyone else that <laughs> said packing pals, hop off her fucking shit, okay? You, That's you were a too goddamn late. order. Welcome to Tuesdays on Stereo with Dan and Phil, where for the next however many minutes, <laughs> you get to hang out with us live and dangerous, unedited, and um, far too uncensored as Completely. we delve deep into whatever the hell my agenda is. And I guess my agenda today was um, I did the thing. What was it called? You did. Dan revealed himself on Twitter, everyone. <laughs> Go have a look and you can Don't. see what uh. is hiding <laughs> beneath Don't his mind. <laughs> set it up for crippling disappointment. Yeah, I did a, I did a cover reveal That book that I'm writing, it's coming out in like eight weeks. Oh my God, that was fast. Who remembers when I posted that trailer last year and I was like, don't talk about this for a while, it's not happening. It's happening, people. If you want to know more about what the hell this book is and what's inside it, then strap yourselves in because it's coming, okay? And yeah, there was a moment today where I revealed what the American cover was. This is quite funny because the UK one, or rather the global one, has been there for a while, right? You've all seen it. It's the amazing thematic graphic design with the black background and then the yellow light piercing through the darkness. Love it. Amazing. Very happy. America were like, oh, see, in America, American culture, it's all about people. We like people and their stories, and it's very personal, and we like faces. So, Dan, we need your face on the cover. So they took my Twitter icon, they whacked it. Massive, massive Dan's massive fleshy head on this book cover. And I think it's a pretty cool photo. I don't like looking at myself, but they, they claim that other people might. And this was just funny. But in America, they were like, no, Dan, we want your face on it. But in the UK... They actively didn't want my face on it. <laughs> that says people in the UK do not like your face. The market research says they just don't like looking at you, Dan. Well, I think yeah. that's just a cultural thing. Because in America, yeah. they're all about celebrating people and personal stories. In the UK, 
we're all bitter and miserable and we <laughs> love to compare ourselves to other people and hate ourselves. So the less of a person you see, the better. So it's a nice blank slate. So if you're in, I think it's US and Canada and you get my book, it's got a picture of my face on it and everyone else gets the snazzy graphic design. And if you want to trade, you're going to have to do some illicit transatlantic transactions. So mm. good luck with that. Do you know what? I don't want to be super boring, but I like the both of them. I, I can't pick a favourite. <laughs> yeah? I think okay, that's good. They, they've both got good vibes. I think it was good that you announced this US one, though, because if it was just the UK new cover, people might be like, it's, it's the same, same thing, you know? <laughs> right, right. So, so this is the thing, right? <laughs> this is the thing, right? They were like, Dan, you, you need to do a cover reveal. And I'm like, we already revealed the cover we've had it revealed for a year. And if we take away the US cover, I mean, I didn't, I didn't want to say this because everyone was very excited about it, but I was like, if we didn't have a new cover with my face on it, then it's, we're not revealing anything. It's the same image. Mm. Yeah, I thought people might tweet you with the Pam from The Office meme, like they're both the same image. <laughs> it's uh, the same <laughs> image. It's the same yeah. image. But um, hey, it's but exciting, yeah, I, I like it's both. coming. I got my first review from a trade publication that hasn't come out yet, which is very exciting. Um, I did like the, in it, they said, um, and at the end they were like, and like Mr. Howell's other books, this will reach a wide audience. And uh, I saw a lot of people, including myself, were like, other books, plural. And for a moment I was like, what? And then I remembered, yeah. are they talking about DAPGO? <laughs> Hey. Were they saying books plural? I mean, was Dapgo a book? <laughs> Dapgo was a literary masterpiece, and I will not hear anything against it. Also, it, was, it was a photo book. It was like a, a tour art book. It, I mean, they yeah. had words, I guess. I, it, I like, did this reviewer read Dapgo? I don't think they were familiar with his Dan and Phil's bunk beds on tour or whatever the fuck was in it. Um, no. But sure. But hey. you are, yeah. You're downplaying this review, though, because they gave you a star, which not a lot of people get a yeah. star on that but, but, review but, okay, website. So the rating system means star means they like it. It's not they gave me a star as in one oh, star. Oh, no, one star. <laughs> <laughs> Dan, you got, you got one stars. star. Dan, you got one star. <laughs> no, oh my you God, got, a star. got a star. I was so excited, yeah. And then someone, they tweeted me something quite concerning, which is, what is my signature going to be? Because throughout the, the Dan and Phil eras, I've decided to do like colon D Dan so it looks like a smiley face because one, it's short and quick to write so my left-handed smudge doesn't give me enough time to completely demolish the entire page. But also, yeah. it's kind of cute and funny. If I'm trying to send this to grumpy journalists and I'm an author mm. with a capital uh, exclamation mark, Ugh. umlaut A, etc., um, what the hell is my signature, Phil? I need an adult signature. Uh, what the hell am I going to do? Help! You could just... You could just do the letter D. <laughs> just a massive D. It's a, it's a yeah. D. Just That's do a, a big D move, on the book. Yeah. Massive. Or you could just write like DH. You could write D Heasy with no. a kiss. I saw someone was like, you should do DH, and then someone said Dan, and then Daniel. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a squiggle that is actually nothing. But it, so it looks like a fancy French signature, you know what I mean? Like an adult Dr. Squiggle. But it evokes yeah. the shape of it could be an H, it could be an N, it could be Dan, it could be Daniel. But you don't know because signatures are mysterious. In fact, it's just a squiggle. So I think I'm, well, I'm going to have to go with that. That's good. That's what most signatures are like as well, isn't it? It's like if you do a signature like that, and it, vaguely, it <laughs> vaguely looks like your name. Like when I write Phil, so it, it, like, it poor... checks out feel you know anything like that um <laughs> Paul. no we've got another yeah. message hello oh hello hi it's my birthday and i'm spending it with you guys yay uh, yay Lockdown. happy birthday, birthday. To tina. Whoop, whoop, tina oh yeah at least you're at least you're an introvert that helps slightly with spending it with us I think you're one of those people in the threshold that now it's been the yearly. Did you, were you the first person to have your birthday ruined by COVID and then now your second birthday has been ruined by COVID? If so, congratulations, Tina. I love that. Must for you. be. You survived. It's, well it's, it's, the, it's the lockdown anniversary today. We've been in lockdown for a year, basically. So that would Wonderful. be the birthday to have it. Yeah, well done. That would that. Be, it would improve my birthday by giving me an excuse to not invite people somewhere. Yeah. Also, with, 
with your book as well are you going to do an audio book i was thinking of that yeah. your voice in my ears i mean i went on audible earlier and apparently you can already pre-order it or something <laughs> so, yeah, i think i'm doing an audio book but uh yeah. i'm gonna have to talk about that at some point because we're not just i'm not just reading the book i mean i am going to be narrating my own audio book which is weird right because here's the thing, yeah. when you write a book, it's quite confessional and therapeutic and there's a distance from it. So I'm like, I'm talking about some intimate stuff. I mean, some of it's like goofy, I'm making fun of my own silly mental health issues. And then some of it's like, <laughs> we're going there and it's easy to mm. write, but then I'm going to have to read this out loud um, while a man looks at me probably through a strange piece of glass. I'm going to have to think about that. But also the audio book, it's going to be, it's going to be different. It's going to be a bit practical. Uh, mm. Yeah. What can I say? Secrets. The con- there's only eight weeks left. The content is coming. Let the inevitable leaks commence. I'm excited. I think you should just do the whole thing in ASMR and that would improve the whole thing for you. I think <laughs> it's <laughs> Welcome to my audio book. <laughs> I, I regret <laughs> saying that. I, I found some depression. What's it? Oh, that's a oh, Stop. Okay. Stop it. No. Don't anyway, let's... if anyone uh, frequented my Instagram stories today, you will have seen an old school picture of Dan and <laughs> Phil in New York. I've really been trawling through the old pictures recently. Why anyway, do you keep going through all these fetus photos? Like, I, it, it's, it's somewhat upsetting for me, uh, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, Basically, we've run out of storage on the iMac, so I'm trying to clear up some space. And there's like a billion. Uh, every time you make a <laughs> every time you make a video, you have to delete our past. Okay, I see how it is. Yeah, that's. I'm slowly deleting the past, so I might as well archive right. a bit of it. Anyway, that got me thinking that there was some Dan and Phil secret projects flying around America, and one of those involved New York. And I thought that would be an interesting thing to talk about today. What are the Dan and Phil secret projects? that didn't happen mm, for either both of yes. us or individually. I mean, we c- that photo evoked a strange memory because we were there for a reason and we were trying something out and our life could have very, very randomly gone down a very different path and who knows, like we would have ended up moving to New York, we might have been there for years, who knows what yeah. would have happened with YouTube. So weird to think about random directions that your life can go in with no planning. Yeah. Um, so I'll tell you a bit about that. I wanted to have the topic of this chat as well to be invent yeah. a fun, uh, invent a funny Dan and Phil secret project. <laughs> so, like, what would a secret, <laughs> okay. what would a secret project be in your mind that would be funny that we could do or maybe didn't do in the past that we've not told you? Anyway, with the New York thing, it was going to be a TV show, and it was going to be basically our own tv show where we'd interview celebrities and there'd be different sections and i think it'd mainly be online but there was also a bit of tv in it as well um and we got quite hey, you're just trying to cover your about tracks <laughs> you're just trying to cover what, your tracks what, cover my tracks how it's <laughs> I don't know what I'm I mean, look, if, we, if we're going to talk about this today, we're like vague posting about the whole thing, but we thought it would be quite juicy to talk about all of these random things yeah. that could have happened. And then you can all be like, how do you feel about that? So, yeah. yes. Uh, but oh, we have a message. Uh, Is this somebody sending in a Dan and Phil secret project? Let's listen. Yeah. You guys were making your own gardening show. <laughs> So, that, okay, that would you, be think, the, you think I'm going to be outside? That would be the opposite of a show. That'd be How to Kill Your Houseplants with Dan and Phil, The Guide of What Not to Do. <laughs> yeah, the comedy <laughs> horror show, How to yeah. Accidentally Trowel Each Other and Get Covered in Moths and Scream. Yeah. I like it. I like it. I would watch that just because we would fail so hard. But with New York, we That's were like, a pretty good example. In, yeah, we were like, do we want to live in New York? Do we want to go there? Is this going to happen? And part of us were like looking at apartments, getting ready to be like, maybe this is going to happen. But then life took a different path and we stayed in London. Because life finds a way. The frogs turned gay yeah. and the reptiles changed sex and re- reproduced with themselves. And that's the way that the universe goes. That was Jurassic Park, not Frog Park. Oh, that, that wasn't us. Um, yeah, I no. mean, in, like, think about me now. We know about, there's a book, right? That's one thing that I'm doing. Yeah. And there's yeah. at least a couple of mysterious post-COVID Dan projects. Give me the vaccine. Give me 
that vaccine, stick it in my eye hole. Uh, but what else? Because here's the thing. What else? I'm being selective. I have the privilege of being able to choose to do things I actually want to do and I'm passionate about. Because I think pe also people would like to see that I'm passionate about the things that I'm making. When we were younger, there were lots of things that we were like, I think we have to do this. Or some things would pop up and they'd be like, oh, Dan and Phil, this is a great opportunity for you and don't yeah. worry about it you know you're, you're going to do this for us but it's really it's great for your cv you'll do this that and the other and looking back i'm like was that a good idea <laughs> or whatever and some of yeah. these things we did some we did i like honestly if people may be shocked by some of the things that we turned down or never mm. up. and it's just interesting to think what could have happened in what some could have been world with dan and phil well, I've got one. In Manchester, I had, I'd say, two months of piloting a morning breakfast radio show. It wasn't with Dan. It was just with me. And I'm not going to say who it was, but it was with a celebrity. I have probably signed something saying I shouldn't mention who they are. But it was me and this celebrity, and we were planning... <laughs> this entire show is a bad idea. <laughs> this, entire, this entire show together. And we did, I think, two pilot recordings. We had meetings. The pilot's when you, like, record a show as if it's live. And we did that. Mm. But I just, did, I just didn't like the vibe of the show. And I couldn't imagine people tuning in to listen to it. Because it just wasn't... <laughs> I wasn't... <laughs> You I wasn't yourself for what? No, no, I'm not roasting myself. I wasn't gelling as much with the the people as I should have after a couple of months. Because of it wasn't something. me, is that what you're saying? Because it was. I mean, it would have been better if it was you. I think I I was like, we should just do this as a Dan and Phil radio plot twist. We did and that later, we, and then we did that. That is, the but thing also, that yeah, okay, they, well done, they Phil. Wanted, you manifested that. They wanted me to change who I was when I was being me. So it was like the show with the amazing Phil. And they wanted me to come up with all of these like zany fake stories that had happened to me. And it was just really oh, weird. And I was not. like, I don't, I don't want to, I, I just want to be myself. I don't want to make up all these stories. And I don't know. It was weird. And the segments so you were weird. you them in the neck. You set fire to the building and you ran to yeah. London. And that's why we moved out from Manchester. That, that, that's what happened because of the neck punch. Yeah. Uh, so that didn't happen. There's a little one for you. I was working on that for that's ages. That's a good one. Oh, go well, let's... Yeah. You were making still? a sort of Great British Bake Off spin-off show, <laughs> but it had the same energy as RuPaul's Drag Race. <laughs> <laughs> Or well, like the like shade rattle. Chaotic, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as I, as I take my bun out of the oven. Like, go, yeah, uh, maybe. Yeah, that, that would be great. Chaotic, uh, highly edited and very dramatic Dan and Phil flop baking show. I could see that. Could we, yeah. could we have the pit crew assisting us while we baked? I wouldn't say no to that. Yeah. Speaking no. of me, uh, what what was the thing that we were talking about? The reality shows. This is what. Yes. Okay. Uh, <laughs> when when was this? I don't remember what year it was. I was asked to go I, on. I'm a celebrity. Get me out of here. And I was just like, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Are you joking? I don't go outside my house. I'm not camping on Australia with loads of. I mean, the entire point of that show is, ha ha idiot let's pour spiders on your face i would cry and projectile yeah. vomit and maybe that's good tv but i would be very very sad i honestly think you in a cave of uh various insects would be gold tv i would love to watch <laughs> that because like they're like release the moths and uh. Dan just has a full out of body experience i think that would be funny um, but i understand oh i understand God. why you didn't why you didn't want to do that at the time yeah. It also, I and think also, it was around the time we were going on tour as well. So you're like, I can either go on tour or go or to the jungle. Or get by a bunch of tarantulas, yeah. Also, yeah. with, uh, what's it called? Strictly Come Dancing. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe, but no, but I what, didn't see it in my future. And both <laughs> of us were asked separately to go on Big Brother, which is like... It's kind of messy, but it's kind of low-key iconic, and I think I'd have fun. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I think if, <laughs> I know that if, you're if, a fan. Well, I love Big Brother. I, I auditioned for Big Brother, but um, as a I think it just, as a normie back in the day, but I think it, it changed as a show, so when they asked you to go on it, it was like on Channel 5, and Davina was gone, and it just didn't feel like the same kind of show, did it? 
Yeah, although I'd love to argue with some random boomer celebrity. That would be nice. Um, yeah. They should literally, I don't know why they haven't done this. Why haven't they done like a YouTuber's Big Brother? And then like, oh, oh, yeah. just like made by YouTube. It doesn't even have to be Big Brother branded. Just like do a YouTube show where you just lock a bunch of vloggers in a house for a month and watch them all fight. No, that that, you, you, made me, you made me remember you were asked to be on Celebrity Big Brother. I was asked to be on Normal Big Brother. That's the difference. Um, uh, yes. Yeah. Who, who would I fight with? That sounds fun. Oh, look, we have another one. Here we go. Phil's What's hamster up? breeding organization with Dan as his glamorous <laughs> assistant. <laughs> <laughs> what hey, what I, would I, I assist know all about it? with in that scenario? You need to play the soft jazz slash Barry White music while we let the hamsters Ooh. get it on. They need I to get in the need mood. To help hamsters get it on, right? I mean, you tell me. Aren't no, they, like pretty, pretty horny. They mate. You know? I, I. They. They are only horny once every five days. So you need to pick the day, otherwise they'll kill each other. I see. Yeah. Wow. And there's no real way. There's well, that... no real way of knowing which day it is. So you just kind of you put them in their separate <laughs> balls or like hold them near yeah. each other, and they'll either look angry or they'll look nice and friendly at each other. Is this uh, is this a pilot for Phil's hamster breeding show right now? It's happening right now. <laughs> this is our sneak peek. <laughs> Welcome to the hamster breeding podcast. It's happening. Did you sign up for it? Oh, I hope that people aren't listening. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So that that was one thing. I what was one thought I had as well. Um, oh yeah, like everyone knows that I'm not that much of a fan of acting. I mean, I'll do some of it, and I think it depends on the character. But I was. You cannot put asked... a script in front of Phil's face. You cannot tell this man what to say. Phil no. is a chaotic beast that cannot be tamed. You just need to turn on the microphone and let the magic happen. Is he going to talk about some weird northern stuff that sounds sexually inappropriate on BBC Radio? Yes, he did it every week. But that's Phil's energy. Yeah. You just need to know. The, on the only time I think I'd be good at acting is if it was more of an improv comedy kind of show, like a sitcom where I was allowed to just say my own stuff, but I knew the character, if that made sense, <laughs> with, with a vague script in my head. It's already anyway, banned by Ofcom, and I don't know what that is. It, it, it's been banned. I was asked to audition for a show. I think it's on Amazon. It was called Red Oaks, and I was asked to audition for the main character for that show. Anyway, I d decided not to even send in a self-tape, because I was like, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I think I would be bad. And the guy they got to do it was Craig Roberts, and he was great. So, Bro, you right have guy. the same face. Yeah, oh my I god, know. I just googled this guy. Were they casting based on like what you look like? Because you have the same th face yeah. as this guy. They, they had a real specific good face, and also they'd seen me That's on like YouTube. That's creepy. And they like, How did they know that? They, were, they had a bot that was like, we need someone with this face, and then they were like, Phil Lester. Phil, we <laughs> must I watch his find YouTube him. Videos. Yeah, so wow. I didn't. And I would, have, I would have had to do an American accent and pretend that I uh, worked in a tennis club and all the hijinks don't I got do up to yourself here. sure on the emperor of comedy phil you once pranked all of your youtube subscribers by saying that you were secretly american the whole time i know maybe i still am who knows let's hear another one you were definitely making a web series about fighting the world's most dangerous animals <laughs> <laughs> Like, we, we, we are fighting the animals. <laughs> <laughs> we lose. Dan and Phil I don't know what the versus is. nature. We are we fighting yeah. or finding? Was that finding or fighting? I don't, I'm not sure what I heard there. I think I I'd like to fighting, fight. right? Yeah. Maybe they'd be uh, one of those ways. Would like, you like CGI to find Dan and the Phil. most dangerous? I don't, I don't want to play find the hippo. I don't want to play fight the hippo <laughs> either. I just want to re respectfully go nowhere near the hippo. No, I don't think we'd survive against a single hyena if we were put into a ring with it. So that would be entertaining if it if it was CGI and the animals were protected. You know, look yeah, after I the, mean, we've look after the nature. Uh, you talked about this before. Was I there? I don't even know about how we almost had a travel show and how oh. we almost had a game show. And there were like lots of things like that where we actually it was it all like it almost happened and that would have been crazy. Yeah. But then th I think a couple of these things they became the tour or this that or the other. I think yeah. a couple of those things still should happen. Personally, yeah, like who knows the travel sh the travel show in particular. I think we'd put our own Dan and Phil spin on it so well that it wouldn't feel like every other travel show. It was really really good and I liked oh, it. But also no, we we had like a bizarre concept. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
so that's a sh- that's a shame. And also the game show, again, it got so close, and but who knows? It didn't, it didn't happen. Mm. So there's yeah. so many Maybe. things in the background. There's things on the table even now. And the thing is, in life, you can never have too much of a plan because you'll never know what pops up. Yeah, you never know what will come next. Um, but yeah, I think. Do, was there any others? You were asked to be in an advert, like, last week. Oh, yeah. I said no to that. Like, you've, you've got to be picky about adverts. Um, I was in a confused <laughs> yeah. advert, and it, it slightly this, ruined my life. Is this stereo sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends, Phil? It's okay if it no, is. No, it's not. Want, is it? It's not. Okay. Okay. Um, so, I was in a confused.com <laughs> advert, which it, it's made me wary of adverts <laughs> slightly, uh, just because... I didn't realize. And now you want to much... dismantle capitalism. I just didn't realize how much I would be put out there, and I was before every mm. every morning ITV ad break, every afternoon. It was mm. like I was everywhere all the time. Anyway, was I was re- I was recently asked to be in an advert, um, and I just didn't feel like it was the right fit. So I said, <laughs> "What was it for? I want to know it, now. What's not I, a fit for you? Well, <laughs> what does it, that mean?" It this was... is so vague. Even I don't know this. Oh my god! <laughs> it was for one of I don't I don't want to say I, I I'm not sure I can say what it was. Um, but wow. it was for us. I'll, I'll say it was for Call a website. It was it was for a website where you bro. Could, you're uh, not helping yourself. Something. It just sounds shady. <laughs> a website where you can do something. Okay, Jesus Christ. Okay, we've got. Uh, what what we'll can go we on. take away from this? Life. Wait, you guys sorry. are building oh. a playground for adults. <laughs> Building? You think that uh, well, like, I can build stuff physically? Uh, they would die. This sounds like the most unsafe playground ever. We'd be like, it's time for the grand opening, and then it would just be a complete disaster. Yeah. Would it be like a giant ball pit and stuff? Because I feel like that would that be That would be fun. easy. I could do that. And, a and single easy, slide. Yeah. Just one massive 400-foot-long slide. Yeah. yeah. I, mm, I cut I out your conclusion that. there with Grace. What did you want to say? How did you? I'm sure I was saying chart? something intelligent and profound that is very meaningful to the listeners. I think it's just, you know, um, some, I would say sometimes there are things that pop up that seem like good opportunities and you want to do them, but definitely have respect for yourself and evaluate whether it is worth it for you, especially when you're younger there's this kind of senpai mentality where you're like, oh, I think I should do that. Or someone's telling me this is a good opportunity or this doesn't feel entirely fair, but it'll pay out one day and it'll be worth it. Always make sure to think about it and stand up for yourself and respect yourself. Okay. Because you have worth and whatever you're bringing to some other team or project or wherever you're working or studying, Hey, you have value. Remember that. Remember that. That was nice. Um, so, I don't have anything to add because that was so profound, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to. Yeah. Win. It's fine. We don't need to plan no. it. You uploaded yeah, a then... video yesterday. That was exciting. Yeah, I did. I uploaded a video. It was a very gay video, hence my gay bandana. And it was talking about all of my weird crushes I've had. Or not weird. They were, some of them were normal. Some of them were weird. Uh, I, some, most, I don't know. Uh, in case anyone didn't watch it, short version. Uh, I'm just glad that the internet... Um, was supportive of me for having a crush on the fox from Robin Hood's animated Disney movie. Yeah, that is a, that is a thing <laughs> that you confess to. I Honestly, was expecting that. So many people were messaging me saying they had a fox and a, a, a crush on the fox, and loads of people have a crush on the fox from Zootopia. But I've not seen that film, so I don't know if I have a crush on the fox from Zootopia or not. But it was coming what through. I, what we want everyone to do now, in solidarity with Phil, because some of these comments were wild, is we want you to admit some weird crushes that you have had, okay? You can just tell us some generic ones, like, oh, I used to have a crush on this person. But if you ever realize it's like, whoa, I thought, I thought that person was cool, I guess I had a crush on them, and that's weird as hell, because Phil, he really put himself out there. He made himself look I did. pretty weird as hell, so please... Send us yours. I will say, though, um, after the initial judgment, I did think about Robin Hood. And the thing is, that is one charismatic fox. And that's the thing, right? Like, his, his, his swagger, his movements, the way that he just leans on a tree. I was like, damn, he's... 
he's a sexy fox. He's romantic. <laughs> it's, it, it's, it, it's, it's all about it the, completely. It's all about the charisma. See, it's all about the charisma exactly. of the the fox. Oh, we've got one that has already come through. Let's have a look. Dude, the Ninja Turtles for me was just. I I cannot. <laughs> <laughs> I love as well that it was the Ninja Turtles, all of them. Look, they 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 were all cool dudes that I would want to go to a party with. That's that's all I'm they, saying. They were charismatic turtles that fought for justice. Yeah, they were. I mean, I get it. I yeah. I read some comments under your video, <laughs> and that was one that was like, "All right, Phil saying that he kind of like Loki felt attracted to Robin Hood the Fox made me realize that I definitely had a crush on Simba from The Lion King." <laughs> <laughs> and look, we're not here to fur shame anybody. But is there? No. I mean, you know, at least at least Robin Hood is bipedal. Yeah, uh, but I think if, it's, <laughs> if you... <laughs> we're talking degrees they're, of anthropomorphization, they're, here. they're not saying they've got a crush on a real lion. They're saying they've got a crush on the lion that is speaking like a human. <sighs> so Simba it's not the same endearing. thing. He had his yeah. long. I mean, you just imagine, like, who would they be? Would they have like a long, luscious mane like Harry Styles? You know what I mean? Would they? They'd be athletic. They'd be charismatic. I, I will say right now, just putting it out yeah. there. I thought about this, and I absolutely, definitely had a crush on Aladdin. Did 100%. you? One hundred percent. Because again, he's just so charismatic. He's just there's just something about you get the feeling that if you went on a a low-key romantic picnic that they would be able to fill the air. They'd make you feel comfortable. They'd be smiling. They'd be polite. I mean, Aladdin, he clearly knows how to be polite to plan romantic surprises on magic carpets. There's a lot going there. He's healthy. He's just, he's a good guy. And there was a lot going on. And I'm like, you know what, Aladdin, he'd be a pretty great boyfriend. So, was so I Aladdin, stand by that. Was Aladdin, do you think, your first crush absolutely yeah definitely yeah. and then i mean this carries on when we went to japan last yeah. last year we went to tokyo disney sea which is a theme park and they had like an it's a small world boat ride but the boat ride was themed around aladdin and it wasn't yeah. disney aladdin the animated thing it was like the story of aladdin alibaba and the 40 thieves like generic fairy tale version and it was just this weird it's a small world ride where you meet this guy and it was all puppets <laughs> yeah. so i guess let's just let's just get it out there i wanted to fuck a puppet no I, that's not what i'm saying no, I, I we we <laughs> I'm, I'm joking, I'm just, I'm just being weird. Um, but they introduced this character about this grand adventure that he went on. And it was like an anime or something. Firstly, this was the most lit It's a Small World boat ride I've ever been on. It was like a it whole story. I was engrossed in it. I laughed, I cried. It was amazing. It had catchy tunes. Then it was this guy and he was like super protagonist energy. And again, he just seemed so joyful and happy and charismatic and he, you know, he fought for what was right. And I was like, I am. And at the end, we left. And you were like, that was a relaxing, you know, that's a good thing. There's a certain point at a theme park in an afternoon where you just want to sit down and go around on a little boat and not think. Yeah. And you were like, that was fun. I was low-key thinking, am I in love with this puppet? I think I'm in love yeah. with him. I think I have just fallen in love with whatever the hell the concept of Aladdin on this boat ride is. So, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 wow. I am with everybody. The shame see, is a bucket. See, Dan... I, I knew you were secretly a furry, but I didn't think you would be a puppety. That's, that's, that's new information. Um, I'm glad you've admitted it on stereo. Thank you. We've got another one to make you feel less bad. The Tin Man from The Wizard of Oz. The Julie Garland <laughs> one. So, uh, no regrets. <laughs> <laughs> the Tin Man. Um, some regrets. <laughs> All I'm, um, all I'm thinking is the Tin Man. He's nice. If you, were if you were giving him a hug, it might be a bit cold, like you were hugging Edward Ooh, from Twilight. Yeah, it, I, I was he's made out of tin. Hard, but he'd be cold, wouldn't he? Damn. He'd yeah. be cold and hard. Unless it's a hot day, then he'd be too hot. Like if you touch the side of a car, and then you burn yourself. Yeah, I mean, so you need to keep polite. him at re room temperature. He's got a nice, endearing personality. He's kind of like Vision. You know what I mean? Bit, yeah energy tin man yeah yeah intellectual vision vibes vision vibes but more yeah. metal light academia tin version i see it 
and yeah. I'm not going to shame you fully for that. So that's no, all right. I, I don't think that would be a full shaming. Did you have any others, or I, was it literally just this puppet? Well, there? I mean, I, I was watching a video, and I thought... Troy Bolton, obviously, right? I was a teenager, yeah. and I mean that's it's, it's literally so boring. It's not even worth mentioning, so I'm just going to skip over that. You know what I will say, and this is that weird mix. You know how you were like, I thought I had a crush on Buffy, but actually, I just really loved her because the character was iconic and she was amazing, and you were just yeah. a stan, right? Mm-hmm. I was definitely like that with you and McGregor. <laughs> In what way? And, well, like, firstly, Moulin Rouge, right? It was, like, my yeah. favourite movie. Obviously, I was gay. Who was I kidding? Um, and I, that was that whole thing where I was like, God, I am in love with Nicole Kidman. She's the most beautiful woman in the entire world. As, as I've gotten older and reflected on that, I'm a bit like, I mean, she is beautiful. And maybe mm. I do still love Nicole Kidman. But at the same time, was I kind of actually like? Did I? What, did, was I imagining myself in Ewan McGregor's shoes, or did I just like Ewan McGregor? And that's the confusion. Oh. You know what I mean? Oh. That's, oh, that's the you, real turmoil. Did you want to be in Nicole Kidman's shoes? Is what you're thinking? I mean, let's not joke. That that's offensive to Nicole Kidman and to trapezes. Yeah. Um, True. Uh, I, I could never pull that off. Are you kidding? I don't know. That was such a weird. <laughs> like for me to reflect, to me to think about how do I feel about uh, gender identity, sexual identity, confusing feelings, being a teenager, not understanding anything, Moulin Rouge. I'm like, I don't, I don't know what the hell was going on there. What's my opinion? Mm. I don't know. I couldn't tell you now. All I know is That's... that you McGregor was also very hot in The Phantom Menace, but not hot because I mean... this isn't about like just judging people's attractiveness. Your video was saying as well, ranking the crushes. Yeah. How, what's how boy friendly. Yeah. yeah. Do you have well, good taste in people? And Aladdin, obviously he's, he's, a, he's on an A. If we're talking yeah. post storyline where he's had his whole character journey, he's great. He knows what he's doing. You and McGregor, Phantom Menace, um, bit, a bit angry, maybe a bit stern, mm. just cares a lot about the Jedi order. Don't know. Uh, Moulin Rouge, you and McGregor, he's a bit bit wet, he's a bit soppy, and he, he's yeah. a bit of a simp. Um, but by the end, he again, he stands up for what's right, and he can sing, and he's very passionate, so I'd give you and McGregor and Moulin Rouge a B, and that's me. Nice. I think, I think that's, that, that's fair. Uh, and I like that you've shared that with us. Thanks, Dan. We've got one more from the audience. Now, oh, let's hear it. I'm preparing to judge you. It's from Hyena. Okay, this is really weird. <laughs> he's our crush. Um... <laughs> The, the Pringles man. <laughs> <laughs> the Pringles man. Get the hell out. Okay, the end. The end. This oh my is a God. fun topic, everybody. This was great. Thank you, for Stereo, Dan and Phil. No, okay, we're not done. But uh, we're done that, with this hilarious. topic. Jesus Christ. Um, wow. Uh, do you have anything Pringles to say man. about that, Phil? It's a he very bushy... You just can't stop? Yeah, it's a very bushy moustache. Um, it would tickle it, you. That, if that works for you, it would be a tickler, wouldn't it? If you're making out with the Pringles man. One uh, comment I did have on the video <laughs> a few times was everyone, no matter what sexuality, seemed to share the Zac Efron thing. And there was a rule that he seemed to transcend all sexualities and everyone just had a crush on him at some point. I mean, that's honestly, it's such a boring opinion that, I mean, it's, it's not even interesting. Why are we even talking about it? It's like, obviously, it's like a given, you know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> but what, 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 what was interesting is some people said that he was their gateway lesbian crush, so they went from him and then on to women, but that was the gateway. I don't know what that means. I, I want know. to decipher the hell out of that. <laughs> I love that, and I don't know what it means, but also I kind of relate to it. I don't know why. I feel like, I feel like Troy Bolton, because of looking back, I don't really know what I was thinking. I feel like he was my gateway to being a lesbian. You know what I mean? Yeah. Same. Yeah, just um, like thematically. Okay. Mm. Enough about that. What's next, Dan? Let us know. Well, What's I mean, I'm day? surprised that Phil is even talking right now because he... Uh, did you post a photo of it? I don't know, it would be kind of gross. Phil, like, bashed his head in earlier. Oh. <laughs> so I'm surprised you're conscious. Yeah, um, it was not today. It was when I was about to start, or just as I'd started editing my new video, I completely headbutted the corner of a cupboard. And it's <sighs> the same cupboard... It's the same cupboard that I smacked my head on last year around the same time. Um, but yeah, I, I think I gave myself a mild concussion because I felt pretty sick, but I'm okay now. And I got a kind of a little 
I thought I'd get a bigger bruise, to be honest. I was excited to be like, wow, look at this bruise. But it's, yeah, just a mark. It's I got not a bit of a mark. Right. I'm glad yeah. you're here. So, I'm still here. Yeah. Watch your head. The, the game. Now, I've been coming up with a feature where I rhyme my name with something each week. And yes. unlike you and the names for this show, Phil, I can't rely on whoever the hell that person was, thank you, that everyone copied for Packing Pals. Blanche. And you can tell, because the quality, Blanche, thank you, is desperate. This week, I'm going with <clears throat> Dan versus Fans. And you is can that... say that with an F or a PH. I, don't, I haven't really thought about this. I was okay. thinking about the radio show and how we had yeah. that thing called Fan Wars and how it was the most iconic thing ever. And I thought, let's pin me against the knowledge of my own life because last week... I remembered that pin off three quote. I just hit you with the forehead thing area. Recollection yes. out of nowhere. So what I want people to do is to send in a voice message naming a Phil is not on fire. So just like straight out of the bat, just go Phil is not on fire. Three. Phil is not on fire. Eight. And then Phil is going to quiz me based on that to see if I remember the material from our own life. Yeah. <laughs> that is supposed to be biblically important. If you want to chuck in a quote from it, great. You could just go, Phil is not on fire three. Forehead birthing area. That'd be great. So feel free to submit a message, say your favorite Phil is not on fire number, and then yell your favorite quote from it. And then Phil is going to quiz me. Do you yeah. think that I've got this in the bag, Phil? I mean, Dan, you've lived through all of these videos. So I'm Te hoping... Maybe. Technically. Yeah. Maybe. Did I? I mean, did you live through them? Or was it all a fever dream? What was going on? That's the question. Okay, so we'll await our first Phil is not on fire to come through. Um, I'll, I'll just give you a bonus question now. Dan, in Phil, oh, is, not hit on, me. In Phil is not on fire one, what colour was my shirt? <laughs> oh, well, Phil, I know you're a man of many plaids. Um, gosh, wow. You had a red one and a blue one and a yellow one and a green one, and they were all identical. And you must have been the only man keeping Top Man afloat. And then I since was. you stopped buying plaid shirts from Top Man, that's why they got bought by ASOS. I am going to say you were wearing a yellow shirt. Ding, 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 ding. I was wearing a yellow shirt. <laughs> I'm ready for this. You all remember right. it. Okay, We've first got a one. first message. Here we go. Phil is not on fire six. Iconic. Ooh, okay. Ooh. Okay, I'm ready, Phil. Have you got one for that? <laughs> Phil is not on fire six. Dan, what name did I give to the snake that you were erotically dancing with? <laughs> you named a snake? I was erotically dancing with a snake? What the hell were we doing, Phil? <laughs> My anaconda don't. My Ooh, anaconda okay. don't. See, now you say Anaconda, vivid, triggering flashbacks. Um, yeah. I don't, for some reason, I want to say Winston. Uh -uh. It was what not was Winston. It? it was Timmy. Timmy likes it. Oh, oh, Timmy likes it. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you got one oh, more. I just got horrified by the memory of my own doing. You oh, I'm one right, so sorry. One right, one wrong. Let's get the I next one. I am so sorry. Okay, here we Phil go. Phil is not on fire 10. Oh, okay. No excuse for this one. <laughs> okay, Phil is not on fire 10. I was going to say, this should be the easiest one. Yeah, um, let's see. In Phil is not on fire 10. We yep. were in we were interrupted while we were filming. We were interrupted yeah by an insect. <laughs> yeah. What's what the question? What color was the insect? I think it was a weird little green fly. It was a green yes. bug. Yes. Mm. Mm. I didn't think you'd I get that one. I remember two and a half years ago, I'm not that foregone. Don't worry about me. <laughs> Look at me. I'm nailing this somewhat, 50%. Oh, well right, done. And I'm surprised. Okay, here we go. This is from Mars. Okay, Hi. um, Phil is not on fire three. Let's go. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Phil is not on fire three. Cast your mind back all those years. What animal uh, was on my shirt in Phil is not on fire three? Animal? There was yes. an animal on your shirt? Oh my god. Oh my god. It was... You had the OMFG owl shirt. 
Well, first of all, that's an OMFG cat shirt, but no, you are incorrect. <laughs> Uh-uh. I'm, I'm double. I was so confident. What is it? It was a penguin. Oh, shut up. Who cares about penguins? Oh, okay. Wow. Right. Okay. We're going to do this one more question. Would you like to all or nothing to win if you get this one right? <sighs> this guy. Really? God. Last okay, one. fine. This is it. This is it. This is setting the tone for the rest of the week. This, this is, is the energy the that we're carrying forward. This defines our entire lives going forward. Let's hear Phil's it. All not, or nothing. Phil's not on fire one. Mm. How do rabbits get protein by eating a lot of meat? <laughs> <laughs> right, we're going back to Phil is not on fire one. Uh, I'm sending my mind back. Uh, okay. In Phil is not on fire one. It's, it's deep and buried, Phil. I'm trying my best. Uh, I'm running. It's it's more than six feet down. It's six hundred feet down. Okay. Oh my god! What movie did you use to describe my parents' house? <laughs> oh my god! Um, I, I, is your mum listening to this? Am I about to like roast her or something? No, you're not going to roast no? her. It's okay. Oh Jesus. I would say that I compared your weird old northern house to The Shining. Yes, you did. It's the Hotel oh. The Shining. He oh, was the thank guy. God. <laughs> and it Loki <low> did. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I remember my own life. I didn't respect the legacy of my yeah. career. If you were, Love it. If you were playing Oof. along at home and you got them all right, then you defeated Dan, so you can let him yeah. know on, on you Twitter can replace you me him. in. You can replace me as the other half of the double act with Phil in Phil's new breakfast radio show that he's aiming yeah. for right now. That I was yeah, so definitely. happy to do. Um, <laughs> so that, was, that was fun. If you're listening... That was fun. And you haven't <laughs> followed either of us <laughs> yet... <laughs> if, who are you talking to if they're not listening? Oh yeah, that's a weird thing to say. I'm just saying, if you if you've not followed us yet, you're missing out on the chance to win a Nintendo Switch. You could be playing or, Breath of the Wild or, or a cube. Thank you. Um, so if you want to do that, just follow both of us and have a listen back mm. to a show. There's loads on our profiles been, now. You can listen back there. We, all that stuff's there, ready for us to catch a lawsuit, probably. And today is I think probably so. the best one yet when it comes to that metric. Thank you all for joining me on this Tuesday. I hope you've had a lovely th- evening hanging out with us. Thanks for joining me, too. I've had a lovely evening and well done on your win, Dan. We'll see you on Thursday, where it will be game night. Boom, boom, the boom, weekend boom, 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 boom. starts early with Phil, and who knows what shenanigans <laughs> you will force upon me i look forward Wah-ha-ha. to it thank you for joining i hope you have a lovely week and i'll see you in a couple of days thanks for hanging with us bye, bye.